Hello everyone. I wanted to take a few minutes to show you how to set up a uh, wireless lock, uh, one of these from ASA Abloy, and how you can make it operate together with your Vercada Access Control. And for this, I asked the help of Kiran, one of our engineers here in London. But before he shares his screen and shows you what steps you need to take, Kiran, do you mind explaining why people should be looking at wireless locks, especially compared to wiring a door for access control? The situations where you might want to use an ASA Abloy wireless lock are where you want to extend the capabilities of your Vicada access control. So you may have some rooms which are difficult to get wired to or are too expensive to traditionally access control, such as you might have janitor's closets or storerooms, for instance. Uh, ASA Abloy also have a versatile range of locks, so they can send out to server cabinets, uh, like lockers and uh, cabinets, as well as even padlocks. So you can reach all these different edge cases with your access control using Asarabloy wireless locks. And remember what we're trying to do is move away here from not having anything or even a, a key. I mean, if you think about this, what will happen to that key? It can get lost, it can get copied, you don't really know who's entering that particular areas. Well, with these ones, not only you can get alerted, uh, but moreover, you can pair over color camera. So in case something happens, you can quickly take your phone out, your tablet, your laptop, and see exactly what's happening and go and rectify that particular uh, problem. You said there's something about low volume doors and yeah. why this solution is, is okay for it. How do you define the traffic volume and how does that impact the wireless lock? Yeah, so we define low traffic doors by about 75 entrances or access control events per day. So if your door exceeds this amount, we highly recommend you use a wired door because a wireless lock runs on batteries. So all these uh, entrance and exit and badging access control events are going to slowly drain that battery. So if you have it on your, say, main perimeter door, it's probably not the right fit for you. You'll find uh, the maintenance of it is quite high. So a wired door in the long run is going to be a better option. Okay, so low throughput. Also, there is um, the consideration of the wireless design. Uh, Asa Abloy is using currently 2.4 gigahertz, which for those of you who know wireless, it's what we primarily used for Wi-Fi. Well, 2.4 is a highly utilized band with a lot of interference. So there are limitations when it comes to the distance between the lock and the hub itself. So remember, the lock doesn't talk directly uh, to the access controller. It does so via the AH30 hub. And the hub connects to the controller via? RS485. So the hub will wire into our AC41 or AC42 via RS485. So you can have 16 of these hubs and 16 Acer Abloy locks per access control. And I actually made a video beforehand, so we access control this room with Acer Abloy. I'm gonna leave a link here so you can uh, check it out and see how that install went. And uh, today we will be configuring this. So that is the K100 lock. As you see here, you have uh, the piece that sits on the outside that people will release and then you have the latch itself and then the mechanism inside that has a battery and the whole circuit. So in the end, you don't want people to be able to tamper with it only when uh, the cabinet itself is open. Uh, here as well, we have another example of some of the locks that Asablo do that's more suited for a regular door. That's the H100, H from handle. And as you can see here, it has the battery and the reader in the handle itself, uh, option for a key override in case the mechanism failed, and then also manual egress. So people from the inside can transition safely in case of an emergency. Uh, so with that in mind, Kieran is gonna share his screen and then we're gonna run you through a couple of the important bits when setting up uh, your ASA Abloy lock. Let's go. Okay. So to get started with programming ASA Abloy Aperio wireless locks, you will need Windows-based machine. It does not work on any other operating system. And you'll also need the ASA Abloy programming USB key, which you can obtain from your ASA Abloy dealer or representative. Uh, and finally, you'll just need the ASA Abloy programming application installed. Again, if you need to find out where to obtain the software, contact your ASA Abloy representative, or you would also be able to find it on their website. If I now click to start the application, it's going to launch. So one of the first things it's gonna ask you when it launches is to either select an existing installation, so all of your existing clients would be listed here, or create a new one. So when you create a new one, first things first, you'll give it a name. So you'll name it after, say, the client or the site or something descriptive so you can come back to it later. You'll also see you've got the password. 
So this just secures the installation locally on a computer so no one else can come and go into it. And finally, you'll be asked for a key file. This key file was used to encrypt the installation so that no one else can just come along and basically take over the lock so they cannot come to your site with the asset abloid key and the programming application and just start reprogramming your locks. So this key is needed. This will be sent once you purchase the asset abloid locks by asset abloid or your dealer. So you'll be able to find it there. I'm actually going to go and open an existing installation, which we have already started here at Vicardo. So if I go to file and open, there's my Vicardo one. I'm going to put my password in here to launch it. Once launched into the Asset Abloid programming application, you will see the scan button. If we just hit scan and give that a few moments, it'll scan all the airwaves for the local hubs. So if you've got multiple hubs, they will appear. So it'll be handy to have note of your hub address so you know which one you're going to go and program. I know my one is this one here, 9755. So I'm going to go and tick that and click on show details. That is then going to launch the Asset Abloid programming application into that hub. I'm now in that hub and I can see I've got two locks attached here. So these are my existing locks and the EAC address is the important bit of information you got here. On the Vicada command side, when you add a lock to a controller, it's going to ask for this EAC address. So take note of which EAC address associates to which lock. Now, quite handily, each lock has its own address and ID, uh, so you can go and identify. To pair your asset abloy lock, you will now need to right click on one of the lock or sensors. You'll go to communication hub and go with pair with lock or sensor. It will now ask you to present the card to lock. So I'm going to hold the lock up to the K100 we had earlier. And then you click done. As you can see, my lock has now appeared in the Asset Abloy application. So I'm now going to press closed. And here is the new lock I've just added. EAC address 33. If I right click this lock, go to lock or sensor and configure, I can then go through some configuration options on a lock. So once the configuration options have loaded, you can then go and configure your RFID options. So if you need to read iClass cards, etc. For our purposes, we aren't going to use this. I'm going to click next. And then we can configure some options here. So again, for Vicada, these options aren't needed so much, but you can say manipulate different credentials, etc., and how they appear in the system. So an override credential, this is quite important because if the lock loses communication with the hub or the hub loses communication with the controller, we can ensure that someone can still access the room in an emergency. So I would recommend add your credentials in here. For instance, MyFair, I might just add one of our MyFair classic UIDs. I click add. I can then type in the card number in hexadecimal format there. Highly recommended to do this. And again, we can put it in manufacturer mode or customer mode for security reasons. So I'm actually going to put this one into customer mode, which will get rid of this error up here. Next, again, you can customize the radio channels, various locking parameters on how the lock will behave uh, and various intervals on the system. But again, Vicada works fine with a lot of these defaults. So if I just apply that, show my card to lock and let it configure. So one caveat to take note of is the Vicada AB33 and the Asset Abloy Aperio locks by default, both read MyFair Classic credential, which is the common ground. So this credential will work across the Asset Abloy locks and Vicada readers. So if you're in a mixed environment, I highly recommend this card. But one caveat is by default, MyFair Classic reads it backwards compared to Vicada command. So we need to come in and change that setting. So what you would do is you would connect to your hub and go to communication hub and configure. So in here, you'll go next and you'll see EAC credential settings. You want to change this and you want to ensure the UID reversed by order is checked appropriately to the configuration. So the configuration I got here works. So I'm just going to press OK and cancel. If you find you've installed these locks and they're not reading correctly, that's the place I'd recommend checking. Here I am back in Vicada command. I'm now going to go and add the new asset Ablo lock to Vicada. So if I head into the main menu and into access, so you can see my existing wireless locks are here. So the controller I'm going to add it to is this AC41 AA mode, so asset abloy mode. So when you first add the controller to Vicada command, it's going to ask what mode you want it in. You asset abloy is the one you want to choose here. When an AC41 or AC42 for that matter is in asset abloy mode, it will only support wireless locks. So you cannot use a combination of wireless and wire. I'm now going to go add my newer door. If you see, ESC address, as I mentioned earlier, is mentioned here. So if I click add door name, I'm just going to call it K100. EAC address. 33, as we mentioned on the uh, asset upload software. 
and then the rest you can pair a camera you can configure all the information here if i click next unlock time we can customize that dpi now this lock doesn't have a dpi so we'll have to turn that off and remote unlock we can leave that on so that can work with the card pass here we are our k100 has been added and it may take a few moments before it appears as online in command you can see the locks are all now connected and healthy all reporting their battery status uh, and their connected status so if i click onto the k100 lock which we just added and i scan my key card you should see an event there key card denied why is that we haven't assigned an access level to this door yet so if i come into access and add access levels. I'm just gonna add my 24 seven London access level and I've got a schedule on the door already. So I should now be able to unlock that door. So if I come to the lock again and scan my credential, you can see the key card's unlocked. The lock next to me has gone green and I can now turn the handle. So we've now successfully added an asset outlay lock into Vicada.